So there are cigarettes and other forms of traditional drugs, but in the 21st century, boy, these 21st century young people, young people are finding new, more creative ways to catch a high. Welcome to our Studio 58 A Live discussion here at the studios of the Jamaica Information Service, located at 58 A Halfway Tree Road. I'm your host, Vanessa Silvera. And with me is Daniel Brown. He is the Substance Abuse Officer at the National Council on Drug Abuse. And beside him is Uki Atkinson. Miss Atkinson is a research analyst at the National Council on Drug Abuse as well. And of course, I already told you my name is Vanessa Silvera. Welcome to everybody joining in on the web. Remember, you can leave a comment and a note just to say, hey, we're here. And if you have questions throughout the program, we'll field it to our guests. So, let's get right in. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Welcome. Yes. All right. So, let's start. We're talking about lean, this new substance, this new concoction. What is lean? All right. When it comes to lean, you say, um, basically it's primarily new to our shores. But it's been around for quite a while now. It actually started in the south in the U.S., then it's made a way all across um, the U.S., made popular by the hip-hop artists. All right? So most of the songs now actually talk about it. So what lean goes by many names, scissor, purple drunk, dirty sprite, some even call it liquid heroin. All right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a combination of different um, substances. The main ingredient is a cough syrup, sprite, and jolly, uh, well, soda and jolly ranchers are sweets. All right, and what's in what does the person get the high from uh, so the real issue is the codeine from the cough syrup okay um it's an opiate an opioid um and it is generally used for painkillers and and that is what gives you the, the high from from the from the mixture now the danger with it is that you know cough medicine is made for a particular condition it is not made for you to be able to feel good and what is happening is well, that feel, when you feel, feel better because feel, it, drugs are made for you to right, feel not better. recreationally right it's for a medical medical purpose right and so the danger with it is that when you mix it with another liquid and you continue to drink it you I mean when you when you get cough syrup it is prescribed at a certain measurement right okay. say 10 milliliters or, or five or whatever but our, our, what young people are doing are just, you know, pouring the mixture, not, not in keeping with what the dosage is supposed to be. And so you can, you, 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 you have the, the, the possibility of an overdose because of the amount that you're drinking. I mean, and then it is masked by the sweet taste and that sort of thing. And so it is quite a dangerous mixture, which is not only impacting Jamaica, it is actually available and being used in other Caribbean islands because it is something we've heard of in other islands as well. All right. You mentioned some of the impacts. We'll get there. But talk a little bit about how our young people get their hands on it. How do people access codeine right. and all these things? Because sodas are easy to get. Right. But... Codeine is a prescription drug. Right. Right. So what most of the students... There's so actually the reality is this, you have... Some sites on um, Instagram, you actually can order, order your drink from and deliver it. The mixed, co the the mixed, mixed code lean? The remixed lean, correct. Okay. Right? But what most students are doing now what is, is actually using, like, for example, over-the-counter cough uh, medication and mixing it with the Sprite and the sweets. Which doesn't have the same kind of potency as the, the true code. mixture of the, of the, you know, lean. Which mm -hmm. doesn't have codeine in it, you know, things like DPH and right. histoptocin right. and so on do not have those components. But but you need the codeine for the the high. Well, you, they are. From what we've been told when um, talking to students, they still get a buzz from drinking the over-the-counter medication. All right. All right. It, so when you do the research from it, I think there's a chemical in the. So the the over-the-counter yeah. one is, I think it's DMX or DXM, mm -hmm. right? It has long-term consequence because what they do is sip it over a period of time, mm -hmm. right? When you use the cough, the, the state that you're supposed to use it for a period, say, I think up to a week mm -hmm. or two, right. no exceeding two weeks. So what most students do is that they drink it over a period of time every single day. 
what has a long term consequence. Like most of them this one of the thing is sleep, is impaired vision, is slurred speech, right. um, diarrhea, vomiting, all of these different factors what are at play. All right. Uh, just pausing to say hello to Sabrina, Rohan, Jeanette. You are watching live. Remember, you can send your questions. Kip Roy, we see you. Hi, Kiana Walker. Uh, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. We'll move on to the next question. We have to be. Yeah. One of the things mm -hmm. we also want to highlight is that because this is a new phenomenon, we do not, we're not able to give you, you know, prevalence in terms of, you know, 20% or 10% of our youngsters. We're just now learning through reports that we're getting from school administrators and guidance counselors and so on. So we don't know a whole lot about what is happening and we're doing a lot of qualitative, meaning, you know, we're talking to young people in, in focus groups and so on. I must say though, surprisingly, you know, we would think, oh, maybe it's just confined to Kingston and St. Andrew or, you know, the more urban areas. But we have been across the island discussing this with young people and as far as Portland to Negril, our young people are aware of it. So either, either that they have, you know, they say, oh, yes, I have a friend who was in school. You know, when I was in school, yes, my friends used to fix it and so on. So it is something that is definitely here. And we really need to, you know, increase awareness on it, both for ourselves and, right. for, and for the young people and their parents. All right. So some of the side effects you mentioned were prolonged sleep, slurred vision. Mm -hmm. uh, slurred speech, right. yes. blurred vision, uh, nausea, memory problems. There are long-term issues like dental decay because over time it, it affects the you know the tooth and it, the teeth. Um, there are issues with weight fluctuation, urinary tract issues. There are quite a number of noted um, side effects from the use of lean. And as you mentioned, it's not just an uptown thing. It's not just it a not, downtown thing. It's, it's not. It's, it's everywhere. Not yes, yes. I mean, we have done some focus group discussions with young people who initially had said, you know, that is for, you know, upper, you know, middle and upper, upper class children. But the calls that we're getting from the schools where children are using it, we know that it is not uptown because those schools are not located and the population in those schools are not from middle and upper income families. All right. Yeah. You mentioned some of the side effects, as I, as I was saying before, but have you heard of any case so serious it was lethal? No, we have not, not had locally. that. Not locally. We have not had not, not locally. Not locally. Not locally. So is it possible that this thing can kill you? Certainly. Mm -hmm. And there are countries like, like Nigeria mm -hmm. that are struggling majorly with a codeine crisis. Right. I mean, it is being distributed illegally. They have persons who are becoming seriously mentally ill because of their use of codeine mixtures. And so, you know, we want to nip it in the bud. Prevention is always better than cure. And therefore, we want to be able to nip this thing in the bud before it becomes out of control. All right. You mentioned cases in Nigeria. Where are some other places where you find the use of lean prevalent? Certainly in the US, US all right, for example. Yeah, where it started. All right, so one of the artists one made um made it popular again was Little Wayne. Okay. All right. So most of his song talks about the lean. There's a couple of documentaries what he talks about using a lean and he'll never stop using a lean. And there's some cases about his health, what has deteriorated over a period of time when it comes to different seizures, what he had when it comes to drinking the substance. Oh, so he has seizures as a side effect of Well, it's alleged. Of lean. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Ed, now we hear you. We're talking about lean, a uh, not so new substance or concoction that our young people are mixing with a certain type of syrup or medication with codeine, soda, and, uh, and sweets. So, yeah, that's what we're, we're talking about. Kerry Saunders, thank you so very much for joining us. Let's move on, though. Is it prevalent in Jamaica because of the influence of foreign media? We can't make that claim. Mm -hmm. um, that would be irresponsible of us to say it is because of. Right. We would have to have hard evidence, right? Mm -hmm. um, what we can say is that media influences our young people mm -hmm. without without a doubt, right? And exposure to various um, 
forms of media and popular entertainment and that sort of thing definitely has an association, but we can't say that is what causes it for sure. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I think also, because it is not a traditional drug where you're saying, oh, I'm smoking ganja or oh, I am drinking alcohol, young people may perceive that it is less, you know, it's less harmful. And so, you know, I'm not smoking, I'm not drinking, it's just cough syrup, you know? So the, 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 the severity of it is not appreciated because it is something that is legally available. You understand what I'm saying? But it is mm-hmm. truly severe. The but consequences is, but can, it can be, be yeah. detrimental to their health. All right, so let's use this media now. How can a parent know if their child is using this substance? You want to take that? Or you want to take that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Go ahead, go ahead. All, right. All right, so we'll have Daniel first and then Uki will chip okay. in. All right, one, the change of the, um, the behavior of their child, right? Um, changing peers, um, always sleeping, walking around the house. You find a lot of Jolly Ranchers, Sprite and car syrup hidden about the place. Uh, one of the slang is to have a, a two foam cups together with a drink inside. So there's little... Yeah, they're they're signs. They're signs, right? So for for and that goes across the board. Not only just for lean, but if you see your 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 adolescent, there are any changes as as Daniel said. So with substance use, generally, if it becomes a pattern of behavior, you will see that their pattern of behavior has changed as well. So if they're not, they're no longer communicating the way they did. They're no longer interested in doing things they used to do. Their sleeping patterns have changed. Their weight. Their weight starts to fluctuate and change, their 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 um, physical hygiene and those kind of things start to deteriorate. Right. Those are also signs and symptoms that something is something is going wrong and you need to find out. All right. What about the roles of doctors and pharmacists? How can they help to stem the rise of the substance? Well we have not we have not had right. any consultations or, or you know stakeholder engagement about this as yet, as I said, it is it is relatively a new phenomenon that we're learning about. Um, certainly, it would help if I mean we don't think that doctors are out there um, prescribing. irresponsibly right. prescribing these these substances, and so it would you know what what do we say to doctors? Don't prescribe codeine mm-hmm. codeine strength um, cough syrups. No, we can't say that, but certainly what we can say is be aware that there are young people who are um, trying to get the substance in order to use it, and so we have to be more vigilant when we are um, issuing it and prescribing it and so on. In my own readings, I found a site that told you what to say, the, the symptoms to mimic if you want your doctor to prescribe the lean. So there's actually a script where you have um, persons instructing young people say this, this is the kind of symptoms you're having and ask for this particular substance because tell them that you had this particular drug before or, you know, my medication was this before. And maybe it wasn't working and and right and 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 I used this. My friend had this and I used it and it worked. And then presto, you'll get right. uh, um, access to the cough syrup. So in light of that, what we would need to do is sensitize our pediatricians, our doctors, our pharmacists and so on about that. We, right. didn't, even, we, we didn't even know that there was a website telling young people how to right. access it. We didn't right. know that. So you rightly said then, they have a role to play because they need to be attuned to these kind of things that persons will come um, and ask for. Right. And if my parent finds out I'm using lean or if the guardian in the household or if a friend suspects that I'm using lean, what can they do? Uh, we have a, um, a helpline. Actually, you can call us or send us a text. It's 564-HELP. Um, so that's 876. <laughs> 564 <laughs> H-E-L-P, help. No, <laughs> it's 4375. 4375. Yeah, I think it's 4375. But we will, we will All right, we'll confirm. Co- yes. Right, no problem. Yes. But we, we, all right, I'm just going to ask the producer to have a look at the helpline. Yes. Just so that we can confirm it and give it out later on. It's 4375. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so that's 876-564-4375. 
All right. So or visit our Facebook page. Or visit their Facebook page. Or call us at 926-9002. 926-9002. 9002. And of course, you have to put that 876 oh, yes. <laughs> behind Still the number. All, these. <laughs> all right, no, no in problem. Front, in front. In front. In front. 876. Right, in front of the number. We're talking about codeine and Sprite or other sodas and... Uh, sweets that you mix up to make lean but what about some of the other non-traditional drugs that our young people are getting a high from for example a couple of weeks ago there were videos being circulated with a young man who seemed to have lost it because he had mixed some substances and gotten a high a, a very high high right a and dangerous high a dangerous yes deadly high what was that substance, if you know, and what are some of the other substances that we're abusing? Okay, so we we did not get an opportunity to test what that young man was using. So we can't say categorically that it was embalming fluid, right? right? That's the mm -hmm. video you're talking right. about. But what we have heard anecdotally is that there is this substance that people are lacing their ganja spliffs and cigarettes with and that it is embalming fluid with the active ingredient formaldehyde. Now that is not meant for human consumption, right? What, what is formaldehyde used for? It is used for the preservation of the dead, right? And so uh, there are some properties that it contains that you really don't even want it anywhere near you because it is highly carcinogenic, right? It causes cancer. Mm -hmm. um, and then the mental health issues are extreme, which is, I mean, if, if that is what that young man did, certainly you you can see what the kind of effects would, would be, right? That you lose your mental um, stability, at least temporarily, okay? So some of the... And this is not... It's, it's, this has been around from about the 1960s, you know? So it's not something new, right? It is something, though, that we are concerned is gaining popularity because, again... In our consultations with young people, right. we've been told, yes, they have tried this embalming fluid thing. So it is something that is growing um, anecdotally, because we don't have the numbers yet, you know, and we have never tested. And so what we really are trying to do is go into communities where we've been told it is, uh, but people don't really want to share the information, where you get it from, can we get a sample of it, that sort of thing. People are a little... Um, closed close off, off. RKG about it exactly all right and you mentioned the formaldehyde is that the only thing we see persons using what about things like e-cigarettes right. we're coming back closer to the traditional now but not quite traditional uh, what about away from smoking now versus vaping mm -hmm. all right let's talk about smoking versus all vaping right. so when you smoke a when you with a cigarette um, you smoke the cigarette then you have the e-cigarette um, or the e-pen which is vaping um, it ends actually electronic nicotine delivery system. So you have electronic nic nicotine delivery system and then you have electronic non-nicotine delivery systems. So some of them has nicotine and some don't. So it has been marketed that it's much safer or healthier than smoking. All right. So it has less chemicals than a cigarette. A traditional cigarette has over 4,800 plus chemicals. The e-cigarette has about 90 or 95 percent less chemicals however we you know we can trace up to 50 60 years of the effects of smoking e-cigarette is relatively new so most of the information we we're still learning about it yes. but some are still emerging from some studies in uh, medical from the medical journal in um, i think pittsburgh us where some of the side effects are something i call wet lung right popcorn popcorn lung like the the danger is the chemicals in the ingredients in the liquid. Right, what happens when you have wet lung or popcorn? Wet lung is when the lung fill, um, is filled with liquid. Right. Right. This happened to a young lady who started smoking for three weeks and then she developed that syndrome. You have some cases where the same artificial flavors where you find in um, popcorn, right, is one of the chemicals they found in the e-cigarette will contribute to something we call popcorn lung, where the lung started to look popping all over the place. Yeah. Another thing is that they found that um, poison due to 
um, infant exposure to the to the to the ends to the um, e-cigarette. So it contains liquid nicotine. Mm-hmm. And what has happened is that because you leave it around and so on, young children go and interfere with it. They drink it or they you know they ingest it, and it Poisons. has caused caused some serious side effects. What about um, pregnant mothers? Could that child have? All right. Well, they, they, they I'm not sure about the impact on pregnancy and, and whether stage. they've had um, those studies done yet. Not okay. yet. Um, but certainly, what we want, what we're trying to do, is explain that it is not as harmless as people think it is. Right. And 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 also, it is not effective in terms of um, lowering their intake of nicotine of right. cigarettes. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people go to it as an alternative. But it has not been found to be an effective method of of, of cessation right. of stopping smoking. Yeah. All right. right. Remember this: when cigarettes started um, back in the fifties, sixties, you say the same. You say here the same language. It is safe. It is healthy. Nothing will happen to you. Look at the information we know about cigarette. So when something new comes out, information always is okay to try until you learn exactly how dangerous it is. And we won't and know until of, half a century later. Yes. And part of the challenge as well is that the marketing strategy is targeting children. Right. So they have the types that have chocolate and it looks like a raspberry, sweetie and, strawberry, and raspberry. Mink. And so it is things that are appealing to young people, right? Mm-hmm. And therefore, and they're not as offy, as, as aware of the dangers of some of these things. You know, they don't go up and say, well, let me read about this and so on. We had World No Tobacco Day on May 31st, and we were engaging the general public. We're right out there in half a tree and in other city centers across the island. And the amount of young people who told us, oh, yes, miss, I buy, I have mm-hmm. my e-cigarette. Primary it had about school, 12 year school. olds, it had about 10 year olds and so on, who were able to get it on the internet. Right? And secure it through older people and so on. So or walk into a shop and buy it. Or walk into a shop Here, and buy it. Here, they, they sell... Children can walk into a shop and buy e-cigarettes. Here. Yes, they can buy alcohol, buy cigarettes, buy ganja. In Nobody's your uniform. saying, are you 18? Are yeah. you old? Let me see your ID. You know, that is not widely happening here at all. And just a call to persons who sell these substances. Adults are old enough to measure the the impact on their own lives they can judge whether or not they are willing to put themselves at risk for using these substances please young people are not so they have a lot to learn and it's part of your responsibility to help them please help us to help our future and our present because when when these persons get hooked and stuck on these things they're coming back to hurt you, to harm you. So it's a cycle. And if we can break it, that would be great. We have some questions and we are going to be taking them now before we wrap because this has been a very informative discussion. Thank you so very much to the persons from the NCDA, the National Council on Drug Abuse, but we're not done yet. Remember to, to submit your comments and your questions below the video. So, Kerry, we hear you. We see you. Thank you very much for the big up. Federica, Madge Leslie, she says she was she's surprised to hear of all these things happening because a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know. And yes. so that's why we're here to educate you, yes. to inform you. And we're going to be giving you the number to call again, the helpline. And if you are using these substances and you want to stop, there's also a helpline for that. Is it the same one? Yes, yes it's for right. help. And we also have officers like Daniel across the island. So in every parish, we have an officer who provides prevention and treatment services to um, schools and communities and so on in each parish across the island. And we should say it's free. It's free. Absolutely. Yes. All right. So what about the... Oh, Simone McFarlane has a question. Um, all right. So... We already know, the young people already know that they're, they're using sodas, but is there a specific kind of... We mentioned it earlier, um, and we're not exactly showing the labels, Simone, don't worry, we're not exactly showing the labels, but can persons just mix up things? All right. But that's equally dangerous, isn't it? All right. One of the trends is actually to, instead of using a soda, is to use alcohol. Okay. All right? That is a very dangerous mixture. We okay. All right. By itself, 
this cocktail right here is dangerous. Imagine it making at least a hundred times worse. Right. That's how dangerous that is. Mixing different chemicals together. Um, what 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 organs are are adversely affected by these things? Well, when it comes to alcohol, the liver is affected. Um, you're talking about respiratory problems. You're talking about the brain. You're talking. About yeah, and, and what we want to say, especially about young people, you see, when, the, when they're using substances between the tender ages of 10 to 17, right, or 12 to 17, that is a critical period when our brains are still being developed, mm -hmm. right? The brain is not fully developed until we're in our mid-20s. And so what we try to do is prevent drug use at this critical age so that they can grow normally. Because the section of the brain that takes the longest to develop is the section that deals with what they call executive functions, right? So prefrontal being cortex. able, yeah, the prefrontal cortex. So to be able to make decisions and weigh, you know, danger versus, you know, long-term thinking, just a whole lot of things that in that critical period when you're using these substances, it interferes with how you act and how you behave and the, and the consequences of using some of these substances. So things like unwanted pregnancy, risky sexual practices, violent behavior. Those are all associated with using substances at this age. So are you telling me then that research shows that there is a connection between these issues that we have to face and the use of substances, illicit substances? Now let me say something that you are clear. We're not saying that every young person who takes up a Guinness or takes up a, a bottle of white rum or takes up a, a ganja spliff is going to become these things but there is a strong association between using those things particularly if they, it becomes habitual right if you become a habitual user if you've been smoking you start you try it you experiment and you like it and you keep on doing it then there's a higher association with negative outcomes and also long-term chronic use so that you become dependent on it and you you end up in the health system later on with you know health issues we can't stress it enough adults you have a critical role to play when you're sending your children to the shop to buy cigarettes to buy to buy alcohol to buy these things sometimes persons tell you that they get hooked because their mother or father uncle auntie send them to the shop absolutely. to buy probably a cigarette absolutely and then who knows they buy one for themselves yes. mm -hmm. and or, they take a draw or, and the, or parents okay. tell you take a sip or yeah. you light it for me or right. Right. there are parents who do that oh young people have told us right. that right? Can't, can't to, to, to parents. one that's illegal to say anybody under 18 i think it's under the child care and protection act it can be charged yeah yeah we, we really can't continue destroying actively playing an active role in the destruction of the minds the morals the physical um, nature of our young people. We really can't. We have to stop it. Yeah, because and, the, and the ability for them to achieve, right? In During that critical period, what they really should be focusing on is learning, you know, achieving academically, participating in the community, that sort of thing. Young people who have a higher level of involvement, who are acknowledged for their achievements, those kind of pro-social activities, have much lower prevalence of drug use compared to those who don't. You understand? So what you want to do is channel their 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 attention and their activities to pro social um, pro social involvement. Good things. Go, you know, get involved in your community. Mm -hmm. Go to extracurricular activities. Be highly connected at school. You know, those kind of things is where you want to, to, to channel your young person. All right. And this is your last opportunity to ask questions. We're about to wrap. But if you miss it and you watch it afterwards, you can always submit your questions later. And we'll try to have our guests. We'll try to consult our guests and have those questions answered. Um, all right. Quickly, we have we have two minutes. We have two minutes left. And so we'll quickly talk about some of the things that young people are eating to get a high. Okay. All right. Well, I like to tell my young people, you know, it's supposed to be licky, 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 and yummy, yummy. Right? Reason for it is, is this. You don't know what somebody's giving you to eat. Right. Like, so the trend going around now with edibles is you have the edible ganja cakes, the edible brownies, um, the edible THC lace gummy bears. 
Mm-hmm. Right? So you have all of these different options out there where persons are saying to try. Now, the edibles are very dangerous in itself. Right? It's like if you smoke ganja, you get about, say, about 20 30% out of it, right? right? And the high comes right away. And the high comes right away. When you eat one of the, the ganja cake or brownie, it takes a while for the system to digest it and then it kicks in. The danger is that you get hungry again, you eat another one or two. So, or oh, you're, not, you're not feeling high yet and you say, but it's not working. And you keep eating, eating. and you eat more and you eat more. But then when the high actually comes, it is way beyond manageable and you go into temporary psychosis right. there are issues with vomiting and you know just the, the amount of people we have seen in um acute reactions to 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 eating um ganja cakes and so on at the festivals mm-hmm. at school at, sometimes at, at school sometimes in university we've been in university camp on the campus and the amount of personal testimonies that we've gotten people don't really know what they're doing and when they do it they say well i'll never touch it again based on what they have have experienced now we're not saying that everybody who eats an edible will have this kind of reaction but we have seen and we've gotten reports yeah. of adverse reactions but and many persons won't know how it will affect them Precisely. until they That's have correct. it exactly so we might see a friend and your friend is a long-term use person and um, the body, but, yes. And the body might be more accustomed to it right. than those who, yes. And you never know what can happen to you on your first try. I also want to point out that there are persons out there who will deliberately give these these edibles or lace items sold to young people on purpose. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, do you know of any acts where we're trying to cut down on the sale of these items well it's illegal it's not yet um it's not yet what's the word it's not hard. um i'm trying to when it comes to the, the, the regulated regulated it's not it's unregulated right and so the standards you know the amount of thc so somebody might bake a brownie and put 10 grams of th of of, of ganja in it and another person might do it and put 40 grams so there's no there's no standard to say, well, okay, it must contain this amount, it must, you know. Right. So what we're seeing on the market is totally unregulated. They've tested some samples up at UE, and some of the samples were so strong in THC that it mashed up the machine. Whoa. Right? The machine oh, I went... Want, could you repeat that, please? Yes, this is what we were told, right? So it's not our testing, but we have been told that based on the amount of THC that has been in some of the samples tested, they they tested some and and one of them was so strong that the machine was just mm-hmm. went like off the charts exactly all right exactly. so so what we have to be understand is ganja used to smoke back in the day seventies and eighties compared kind. to ganja now it's not the same it's a difference it's not the same yeah it's much all right. stronger as we wrap okay Daniel do you have any last words to share with our audience especially our young people. A few minutes of pleasure can cause you a lifetime of problem. Your future comes first. That's all I have right. to say. Absolutely. And I would say, you know, just be mindful of the kind of company that you keep. Try and stay connected. You know, stay connected with school. If you're having challenges, talk to somebody. It's not a problem if you go to a guidance counselor or a psychologist if you're struggling. Find other ways to cope other than burying your problems in substances because it doesn't take away the problem. All right. It's time for us to wrap. I know persons have more questions. I'm seeing more questions, but we have to go. Thank you so very much for joining me on Facebook Land. Thanks to our guests, Uke Atkinson, she's a research analyst, and Daniel Brown, who is a substance abuse officer, the man that goes all around the island to talk to you and tell you to stop it. They're both from the National Council on Drug Abuse. Remember, you play a critical role in our Studio 58A sessions, which means if there's somebody you'd like to see here, drop us a line, uh, drop us a comment and let us know, and we'll do our best to have them. Thank you so very much for joining me. Tune in this and every Thursday on Facebook. I've been your host, Vanessa Silvera. We've been talking about the rise and impact of lean 
e-cigarettes and other illicit substances that are affecting especially our young people. Tune in next week, same time, same place. Thanks. Thanks.